What's up guys, this is PushPro14, aka PushNB. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do syncing today. So what I went ahead and did is started a new composition, um, brought in a clip and a song. Just drag and drop them in here. Do that. Um, so here's a clip. Let's go ahead and turn on the audio, move that song, turn off the audio on the song so you don't hear that. And let's hit... Um, Double L. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, I'm going to do it with the waveform right now, and then I'll show you another way in a little bit. Double L. Double click it. And then each one of these bumps should be a gunshot. Some of these won't be. Maybe they're explosions or something like that. But yeah. So you can get the gist of where they're at from that. Um, yeah, this one looks like an explosion. Yeah. So let's not sync that. So that little bump right there is a gunshot seems to be a little off. Um, so once you get the general idea of where he's going to shoot, um, I go frame by frame using this thing right here. Just keep going until there's a hit marker there or the bullet's gone right there. And then what you're going to want to do is right click on this part and then go to time, enable time remapping or control alt T but I don't ever use that. Alright so once you have that it'll bring up this little thing right here then you click this little dot right there putting a keyframe keyframe is what allows you to sync it basically holds this one frame to wherever you drag it so if you want that shot to be right here you just drag that to match right there um, alright so now that we got our keyframe we can go ahead and um, match it to the song um, L again on the song so you can see it. Um, each one of these bumps, you're gonna have to listen to it. This is where the practice comes in. Um, you'll be able to tell where's the best place to put things from practice, essentially, and what sounds good. Um, so at first, this might take a long time, but once you get the hang of it, it should be pretty easy. Um, so yeah, where's our keyframe? So there's a keyframe. Um, so let's match it up to right there. So we'll go ahead and zoom in. Try to get it at the beginning of the the bump, rather towards rather than towards the middle or something like that. So then that we got that spot, we lined it up on there. So that bump is right there on this line. You zoom in. You hold um, space bar to drag along this. And then you put this keyframe right at that frame that you lined it up with. So there's that. Now, so when that part of the song comes in, it'll take the shot at that spot. So now that we got that synced up, let's go ahead and do the next shot. But let's do it without waveform this time. Let's just scrub through it. Um, depending on how fast your computer is, which style you should use. If you have a fast computer, you can just play through it like this. It should work pretty well. So let's go ahead and find where he took this shit. Take this shot. Um, just using oh, right there. So there, right there. I'm gonna want to see how there's a hit marker right there, and the bullet went away. So we're gonna go ahead and put a keyframe right there, and then we'll sync it up with let's say this spot right there. So go ahead and zoom in there. Find where it starts going up, or there's the biggest bump. Move it over to that. Um, yeah, so, to know where to put these, or sync it up, um, you're gonna have to listen to it and go with the flow of the clip, I mean, um, you don't want to have a really slow part in between two really fast shots, you want to try to go with the clip, um, don't try to force things, um, but yeah, if you do want to have a really long time in between shots, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So it takes a shot right there, and then it looks like he's going to take another quick one. Or not. <laughs> Alright, let's say he took a really, really quick shot in between there. And you want to slow it down a lot. Um, what I do is I um, go to the spot where he shot, go forward a few frames to where it's almost halfway zoomed out, about there. Put another keyframe. Then I click Control-Shift-D and it cuts the layer in half. 
Um, then I close that, pull down the, ne the new menu, the new layer menu thing. Go ahead a few frames to where, to where you want it to be. And then you drag this out so it's much slower. So the distance between this point of scoping out and that point of scoping out is in between these two. So if I wanted that to be quick, you make it really short. And if I want it to be long, you can make it really long. So it takes a long time for them to scope out. Or once again, you can make it really short and make that happen in much shorter time. So all of those frames are within this area between the two keyframes. So there's that. Um, if you want it to look smoother, what I do is the reason for me um, waiting till it was zoomed all the way out, like halfway to make it slower, was uh, for this reason that I'm going to tell you right now. Um, um, I don't use Twixter personally, but you can if you want to. I don't really deal with any of that. So what I do is I click this thing, um, these little movie slide things, so that enables um, frame blending. And then you're going to want to click this once and then twice so that it gives it, it kind of like fills in the blanks, you could say, to make it much smoother. So it's kind of like gliding. So yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what happens if you make it frame blended for this part. Um, let's go ahead and turn that on for this and then go through this and it'll, it'll give you something really disgusting. Like right there. You can see that kind of weird stuff going on. That also happens when you zoom in to take a shot. So let's see. Let's see, let's see. Right there. This is what you don't want. You're going to want to cut, cut out, essentially, the frame blending parts that have this nastiness. Um, that's all to do with uh, Control-Alt-D so that you can, let's say, cut out this frame to not have the frame blending. Oop, wrong button. So now that is the frame where it's all weird. You just turn it off for that so it'll look nice and smooth. We don't have that weird frame. You see? Alright, so there's that. Um, what else should I talk about? Um, general tips for keyframing. Um, to go as fast as possible, um, you can use the waveform, but once again, if you have a fast computer, you can just go through it like that. Um, see, this is what you want to try to avoid with the frame blending. You really, it just looks disgusting when you have that. Um, actually, one thing I could tell you about this is what it's doing. Um, when you do the first click, it's kind of like a fade in between them. When you do the second click, it's kind of like a, a warp in between them. So to avoid the weird thing, you can either put it on this so it looks a little bit more smooth, but it'll kind of be messy. But when you really want to slow things down, you're going to want to have this so that it's really smooth. Okay. So yeah. Um, hopefully you enjoyed and learned a few things. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. And um, I think next time I'm going to do color correction. So uh, keep a lookout for that. Thanks. Peace out, guys.